Won't you come to the well that never runs dry? Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Won't you come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, you can't find what you're looking for. Oh yeah, now let's look at For God so loved, for God. McFarland III, and I am the senior pastor of God's Harbor for All Souls, and it brings me great joy and pleasure uh, to share with you the Word of God on another Sunday. Listen, I'm so excited about what God is about to do and what He is sharing through His Word, how He is opening our eyes and giving us revelation to how He feels about us and what He is concerned about our situations, and so uh, I can't wait to hop in and share the Word of God. We're excited, amen, to be back in our building on next Sunday. We uh, didn't go this Sunday, but we will be back on Resurrection Sunday, or what the world calls Easter. And we will come together and to celebrate, amen, on next Sunday. So, amen, put on your finer clothes, amen, and come out and celebrate God with us on next Sunday. Listen, I'm excited about giving you an idea as to the authority of the believer and uh, continuing in terms of why the enemy is in such disarray when it comes to the Word of God. And we began to explain on the last few weeks why the devil wants to snatch the Word out of your spirit. And when he begins to steal the Word, he will steal your joy. And this Word has been so prevalent for me, amen, and I I'm so thankful that God has placed this into my spirit because so many of us 
amen, have been going through. And the Bible says that we will go through. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, is what the word says, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. And the reason why we have such confidence that he will is because the word is on the inside of us. And it is the word that will deliver hope and will give us the destiny that we need, amen, to continue on this journey called life, amen. And God has shared with me a word, and I want you to understand, you know, why the enemy is so upset, amen, as we see so much is going on, amen, with the economy, with the politics, amen, all of the things that are going on in your community, in your city, the enemy is mad, and I want to continue to make him upset by delivering a word that will give you hope and will hopefully be put on your tongue to spew against the wiles of the enemy. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the evil darknesses of this world. And so we're not fighting against each other, but we're fighting against the demonic forces that does not want to see joy in our life. He wants to ride us and make us emotional and make us angry and make us bitter. But I'm here to tell you, when you understand the word, you can't help but to walk in love and to walk in joy and to walk in peace. And so today we want to dive right into the word of God. And I want to show you why the enemy is after your word and why it is so powerful, amen, that we continue in the word, amen, because when we continue in the word, amen, there is hope for us. And that is how we're able to defeat the enemy is by keeping the word on the inside of us so that our joy is fulfilled. Turn with me to your Bibles to John 1 and 1. Amen. We're going to start off. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Listen at this. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And people of God, what I want you to understand today is, is that everything that was created, everything that you see was created by words. Amen. And the Bible says that the word was with God and the word was God. And the reason why that is so important is because you begin to understand the power of the word. It is creative. Amen. It takes nothing and turns it into something. And so when you have the word of God, it is the power source of your life. It is the fact that we can call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. And we can turn those things that look like darkness into light. And I'm going to show you why the enemy is wanting to snatch your word out of you because he understands this word that I'm preaching to you today is that if you get the word of God saturated in your heart, he knows he is already a defeated foe. You see, the Bible says that he is as a roaring lion. He is not a lion. Amen. I want you to know that the enemy is scared of you. Amen. And little do we know, amen, that he is afraid of the word that is in your spirit. And he knows that the only way that he can defeat you is that if you get off the word, if you get into emotion, if you get into anger and bitterness, if you allow the things that are around you in your environment, if that contains and controls your spirit. But when you are a believer and when the things of life becomes heavy, amen, and when you are able to stand on the word of God, he knows he does not have a chance to, to defeat you. Why? Let me show you. Let's go to Genesis 1, 1 and 3. Listen, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. I'm going to stop right there because I think you get the picture. Amen. The Spirit of God began to move as the Word was spoken. And if you want God to move in your life, you've got to speak the Word of God. You've got to understand it. It has to be revealed to you by his spirit, amen, and you've got to speak it. You've got to meditate on it. You've got to confess it because the moment you don't, the pressures of the world are too much for you to bear if you do not stand 
on the word of God. Amen. All of the things that are going on, it will potentially depress you. It will overwhelm you. It will oppress you if you don't have the spirit of God in your life. Amen. And as you face affliction, whether it's in your home, in your relationships, on your job, wherever it is, if you stand on the word and you do what God says and you speak the word of God, he will turn those things that look like it's dark into light. He will create something from nothing, just like he did with the beginning of the existence of this world. And I want you to understand that when we were made in his image, God gave us that same authority to speak and to create. Amen. And I want you to understand that the enemy, he is afraid of you when you have the word of God. But if you're not operating in the spirit and you're not operating with the word of God, the enemy is not afraid of you. He only is afraid of those who understand the word of God, who operate in the word of God. And when the enemy went to Jesus, amen, after the 40 days of fast, amen, he sought him so that he could literally destroy Jesus. He wanted him to commit suicide. He told him to go on top. Amen. If you be the son of God, jump off and let the angel save you. He wanted to kill Jesus. But Jesus was too persuasive because he knew the word of God. And he knew that man should not eat by bread alone. Amen. But by every word of God. Amen. He knew who he was and the enemy couldn't deceive him because that's all he's trying to do. He's trying to be deceptive because he knows that he cannot win with the child who understands the word of God and who speaks the word of God. And so people of God, just like in the beginning where the word was, the word should still be relevant today. Amen. And that's why, amen, you should take these messages, listen to them, Listen to the words that are coming from our pastors, Mike and Pastor Dorothy on Wednesday. Join the prayer line. You need to get your spirit saturated in what God is doing. Because when your spirit is saturated and not filled with the things of the world, you will begin to arise above affliction and joy will remain no matter what is going on around you. Amen. And I want you to understand that you as believers, amen, you have authority. Amen. And that authority was given to you by Jesus Christ. And Satan tried to snatch it away from us in the very beginning because he knew who God had created. Who did God create? Let me show you. Let's go to Psalms. I want to show you Psalms in the eighth chapter. Hallelujah. Starting. Hallelujah. Psalms 8. I want you to see this. Read this with me real quick. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, listen at this, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Verse 6, thou madest him to have, listen at this, dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. But I get excited when I understand what God has given us. Listen, when God made us, he knew what he was doing. The Bible says that he made us a little lower than the angels. And when you look at that word in the Greek, it literally means Elohim. It means a little lower than the supreme being. And the angel there in this case means and then that we are little gods, that we are just like him. Amen. And if we are little gods made in his image, amen, the Bible says, who is man that thou art mindful? He is mindful of us. He is concerned about us so much that he has given us everything that he has to be successful in this earth. 
Amen. And I want you to understand that God has given the earth to man. And we have dominion. We have authority. Amen. And the enemy, amen, he has perverted it. Amen. And he has introduced sin in the book of Genesis, the third chapter. But Jesus Christ has restored us. He has reconciled us. And no more does the enemy have power. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus Christ went into the bellies of hell and he snatched all of the power, hallelujah, from the enemy. That's why we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. That's why you should come out and celebrate on Easter Sunday with us because of what Jesus has done. It is finished. He went into hell and he took the keys from Satan. He snatched his teeth out. He snatched all of his power and he gave it back to us who were the rightful owners, amen, and we have dominion, hallelujah. Don't you know that the enemy is upset, amen, when you know and have revelation of who you are and that you have authority? He is mad, 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 but we love to see the enemy upset, and that's when we know that the word is working and that our spirit is growing and that we're able to conquer all because of him. Let me show you something. Let's go to Colossians 2. 15, it says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Listen at this, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Jesus has triumphed over the enemy and he has given us authority. Let's go to Revelations 1, 18. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Let me tell you, hallelujah, Jesus took the authority from the enemy, amen, and he snatched it because of the cross. And people of God, I'm here to let you know, Romans says that we died with him, we were buried with him, and we rose with him. That is the miracle of Easter Sunday, of Resurrection Sunday. It said we were crucified with him, we were buried with him, and we rose with him, amen. And if you believe that, there is no greater evidence of the word of God than the resurrection of Jesus, amen. It is the very foundation and fundamental of what we believe in. And because of Jesus, we have authority and we can speak the power of the word of God over every area of your life. Let me tell you, what are you going through? Begin to use your authority and change the atmosphere in your home, on your job, in your business, and do exactly what God did. Whatever you don't like, you speak the word of God and allow that which you want to happen in your life to happen by speaking the word of God and being positive, amen, with all of what Jesus has done, he has given it to us so that we can be victorious in earth. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today and I'm happy to know that because of Jesus, we have the victory. Let's go to Matthew 28, 18. I hope you're getting this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Listen, all power was given to Jesus. And we know if we were buried with him, amen, that he gave us that power when he snatched it from the enemy. Amen. And I'm here to let you know that you have authority, that you have the authority to decree and declare, that you have the authority to bind and loose. Amen. And whatever the enemy is trying to do, you can bind him up. Hallelujah. With the word of God, and you can set yourself free, amen, by the word of God that is inside of your spirit. And people of God, I want you to understand that you have the very Dunamis power, you have the life inside of you to change whatever is going on. Amen. Don't be depressed. Don't be discouraged because of what you see and then of what's going on around you. But change your attitude, amen, because you've got the authority. Listen, you are made a little lower than Elohim. Hallelujah. You've got life-creating power in you. You've got the ability to call those things that be not as though they were. And if you're wondering why things aren't changing or moving or being created in your life, it is because you've allowed the enemy 
to snatch the word out of you. Let me show you something. Let's go. I'm going to read, amen, Matthew 13, 18 through 21. I'm going to read that out of the NASB. Hallelujah. Listen at this. Verse 18. It says, Hear then the parable of the sword. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. So joy is received when the word has been revealed and when the word has been understood. The Bible says, with all that getting, get an understanding of what the word is supposed to do in your life. Get an understanding from the prophets and from the men and women of God as to what God is speaking into your life. And when you have that understanding, the Bible says the word produces joy. But listen at verse 21. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately, listen at this, he falls away. Let me tell you, immediately he falls away because he is not continuous in the word of God. And the enemy will have you distracted. He will have you on social media. He will have you working all the time. He will have you doing everything but worshiping, everything but meditating on the word. He will have you doing everything but your confessions. And that's because he knows that if you have the word of God inside of you, joy is destined in your life. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. What are you asking for? You can't ask if you don't have the word inside of you. You don't know what to ask for. You don't know how to ask. And because the word of God is not a core in your life, the enemy has come to deceive you. Amen. He has come, amen, to snatch away the word out of your life. Why is that? Let me show you. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, to everyone that believe it. All you have to do is believe and you have access to the power source of the word of God. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that my God isn't real. Amen. When you understand that God's power is his word, if you believe, hallelujah, let me say that again. If you believe, the power source is yours. Hallelujah. Let's, let me show you something. Let's go to Mark, hallelujah, 16, 15 through 18. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. There it is again, that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. My God, let me tell you, no deadly sin or sickness, I should say, shall come upon you. You shall lay your hands. Hallelujah. We've got the authority to remove the enemy out of our lives. But it is your, it is up to you and your will to maintain your joy by keeping your word. Let me tell you, if the enemy can snatch your will and allow you to do things that doesn't appropriately match the word of God, if your words are not matching God's word, if you're speaking those things that are not aligning to God's word, you are allowing the enemy to come in and to snatch the joy. Hallelujah. And so many of us have been negated the victory because our words has not been aligned to God's word. Amen. We have been speaking death. Amen. I, I'm dying over here. Amen. This flu is killing me. We have introduced words, hallelujah, to slowly kill us. 
And it took Adam over 900 years, it took Satan 900 years to figure out how to trick him to kill not only his spirit, but his body. Amen. But now you see, we're not living 900 years. The enemy, he has perfected his way of getting us off of our faith. And not that man is no longer living 900 years because he has systemically issued doubt, fear, unbelief. And he has perverted the words that we speak. And we have begun to speak death upon ourselves, death upon our finances, death upon our relationships, instead of speaking the word of God. And the enemy has quietly begin to win because of what we say and what we behave, our communications and our behavior. But I'm telling you today, if you refuse to allow, and it's not easy, but if you've got a made up mind and a strong will, amen, you can keep the word in your mouth. Amen. Listen at this. Let me show you something. Let's go. Hallelujah. Uh, real quick here. I want to show you something in Psalms. Before before we do that, I want I want to share uh, this with you again. Let's go to Colossians. Let's go to, back to Colossians two fifteen because this is so important. Hallelujah! As I share this with you, Hallelujah! Colossians two fifteen. As we close, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Don't you understand that the enemy is not happy about what Jesus has done? Amen. By going down and taking his power away from him. Hallelujah. He is not happy about it. Amen. And what I want you to understand is, is that because the enemy is not happy, he is coming to do everything he can to snatch the word out of your spirit, to snatch the word out of your mouth. Amen. And on next Sunday, we're going to finalize this because I want you to understand that because of what Jesus has done, hey, hallelujah, we're running out of time, but because of what Jesus has done, we should be excited and we should be filled with joy knowing, hallelujah, that God has given us the victory. Amen. And our words, they are life. They are powerful. Amen. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. And because we are aligned, with the word of God, and because we have an understanding of who we are and what the word can do, the enemy cannot deceive us. Amen. He cannot come against us. Amen. Because we know where he's coming from. We understand his tactics and we understand what he's trying to steal. But I want you to join with me. Amen. And stand firm that you will not allow the enemy to move you off your joy, to snatch the word off of you. Continue to confess. Continue to get into the word. Amen. Spend time, quality time with God and allow him to build your spirit up so that you can maintain victory over every area of your life. My God, this was so good. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for revelation. We thank you for revealing the power of your word coming from the believer. And God, we thank you for allowing us to understand what the enemy is after. And we thank you, Father, for keeping us on our toes and bringing revelation to why the word is so important. And we thank you, Father, for the joy that is established in our spirit because we will speak the word of God. We will not be forward and be deceptive and do what the enemy wants us to do. But, Father, we will be disciplined with our tongue and we will only speak and say what you say. And, Father, we thank you for the harvest that we will reap for standing on the word of God and relying on the principles of what the word has for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. I pray that you enjoyed this word. I pray, amen, that the word of God will become alive to you. Amen. And I pray that you continue to support us. Amen. If this word has been a blessing to you, amen, I'm asking you, amen, for your support. Amen. Anything will help. Amen. And as you see the ways to give, amen, we ask that you continue to support us, continue to support the ministry, amen, because we are trying to get the word out to as many people 
as we can. Listen, I can't wait to see you guys on next Sunday. I can't wait to continue to explain to you the authority that you have because God has sent his son, amen, for us. And he just didn't send him, but he had him crucified and he was buried and rose again so that we could have life, not only life, but that we can have the authority to speak the word of God and to create everything that we need to have joy in our lives. And if we don't do it, it's not anybody's fault but ours because we haven't used the authority that Jesus Christ has provided for us. Listen, I want you to understand that we are so happy to see you on next Sunday. Amen. We're so happy to worship with you. And I want you to know that I love you. God loves you. And never forget that Jesus is Lord.